Hi! Today I would like to talk about music datasets. So you see me posting all the time about deep learning for music. I will give you an insight about what kind of data I am working with. Um, first and foremost, just a clarification, I'm not talking about WAV files or MP3 files. I'm not talking about audio files. I'm talking about MIDI files. And for those of you who don't know, MIDI files are well, those are very, very old files. So for file format is very old. It's symbolic music, which means that um, it is a collection of note events arranged in different instruments over time. So it's actually like, a, like reading cheat music. Of course, you could use any synthesizer to map them to audio files. But well, keep in mind, we're talking about symbolic music. So if you want to learn more about um, audio, well, you have to go to, well, a couple of other sources. Um, if you would like to know, just ask me, I'll give you a couple of hints. Before I talk about the data sets that I'm using, how do I create those data sets? So, so in a nutshell, so you always assume that I, and maybe in the future you, would be working with a collection of MIDI files. So every song is a single MIDI file. And I have created over a couple of months um, a strong, like powerful MIDI pre-processing pipeline which allows me to take any data set and process it in almost no time. Well, almost no time. You see in a moment what it means. It's, it's highly, highly efficient. So it does multi-processing in order to speed up things because, well, it takes quite some time. And why am I doing this? Well, you have to take the symbolic music and map it to some representation that, for example, a transformer can work with. And when you hear transformers, then you will immediately think about that what you work with are token sequences. So what I do here is every MIDI file gets mapped to so token sequences, so texts that I can actually do deep learning with. What I do is, well, short story is I load the MIDI file, I quantize the node events, so I make sure that they are on the time grid, no groove, and then optional, this feature extraction, I do some harmonic analysis like node densities and underlying chord progression. And then I split those results into tracks. So each instrument is a track. And then I split the tracks into bars so that I can do a bar-wise prediction. Well, and here, already prepared something. Here's an overview of the data sets that I'm using. So as you can see, well, there's quite a lot waiting for you, but I will just um, guide you through the numbers. Not all of them, because most of those numbers are not really interesting. So what you see here, a good example, JS Fakes by my colleague um, Omar Peracha, just a great, a really, really great um, data set, especially if you're just getting started. So if you're getting started, I advise you against using a really, really big data set of hundreds of thousands of media files. Start very small. JS Fakes has 500 files in it, 500 MIDI files. And what you can see here is when I finished the pre-processing, it's 15 megabytes of data. So that's almost, almost nothing, but still a great start. If you want to learn about, for example, how to use an LSTM to do music generation, this is the data set you would want to start with. And I use JS Fakes in my own compositional works. So I have a tool that composes with deep neural networks and I have one neural network that's trained just on JS Fakes to give it a more like Baroque flavor. And that's, well, that's what I'm talking about. JS Fakes is a collection of fake Johann Sebastian Bach chorales. So it's music with four voices to be sung by, by people. So Human voice is the only instrument in there. So and what you also see here is well, pre-processing time. It's one minute, it's nothing. So it's a very good data set to get started and you can expect almost immediate results. The second data set that I'm also using is Kunst der Fuge. It's a commercial data set, so I paid for that one. Um, it's a collection of 17,000 MIDI files of classical music high quality MIDI files. That's what got me very, very excited. Um, I also did some pre-processing and what you can see immediately here, uh, well, the numbers are bigger. I said 17,000 MIDI files and the resulting token sequences, so the text files that I use for deep learning, two gigabytes. So this is quite something to have on a hard drive. And you see 
790,000 um, samples for training and 190 million tokens for training. So this is a rather big data set. Um, I'm still waiting to get some GPU compute so that I can train a transformer on that. I'm very optimistic this is going to work. Luck clean. Uh, luck is uh, Hindi for a lot. And that's, well, the name of the thing. Um, it's a data set curated by Colin Raffo. So you can just find it on the internet. It's a big data set um, and it comes in different subsets. So the first subset that I'm working with is Luck Clean, which is a cleaned up version of all the MIDI files. And you can see here, well, in comparison to Kunstafugo, almost the same amount of MIDI files. Um, Pre-processing for hours here when I do chord feature extraction. So I also have the underlying chord progression um, as extracted features. And you see, well, I said 10 gigabytes and almost a billion, yeah, almost a billion um, tokens and one million samples, one and a half million samples. So this is quite a lot. Luck clean um, in comparison to the data sets that we've seen before is um, not classical music. It's not Baroque music. It is a good collection of a lot of musical styles, including pop music, rock music. Um, and I think it even has a little ethnic music and urban music in it. So it's a good subset of, let's say, first and foremost, I think, Western music. So it's a very, very general data set. Um, Luck clean. Small one, luck full, is the entire one. Not cleaned up, so it has, where is it? 178,000 MIDI files. So this is a lot. And you can see here the whole pre processing, mapping those MIDI files to token sequences took four hours on my machine. So this Mac has been huffing and puffing, doing multi processing for four hours straight, like crunching numbers. Um, turning, mapping everything to the token sequences. You see, well, 11 million samples, that's a lot. Um, 6 billion tokens, 72 gigabytes of data. It's just lying around, ready to be put into a transformer for training. So also one thing that I would love to do next. And finally, here, the metal data set. That's the one that I'm always talking about, where I already did the exercise and trained the deep neural network on that. Um, I trained GPT-2 to compose metal music. And what you can see here is has different flavors. 10 to 3 gigabytes, 24 gigabytes, 22 gigabytes of data um, with 4 million samples for training, 2 billion tokens. So this is already a very, very nice data set. So what you can also see here is, well, successful files in, in percent. So like how many of the original MIDI files I could actually map um, with the um, JSFX data set, not a problem. Here in Kunstafuge and Lach, you see, well, it could not process all the files, but it's fine. I mean, we are talking about statistical learning here, which means the more, the better. I could not manage to, to map a couple of corrupt files. So it always happens that in your data sets, a couple of files are in a strange file format. Also, I have a couple of bugs in my pre-processing pipeline, so it doesn't um, it doesn't transform all of them, but those that are transformed are fine. So if I would fix a couple of things, if I would, would even implement a couple of more features, then those numbers would go up. But well, you already see in those numbers, those are quite a lot of um, trainable tokens here. So in summary, if you like to get started, use JS Fakes freely available on GitHub, you find immediately. Kunstafuge, well, if you would like to go down the classical music road, this is um, available and you have to pay for it. Luck dataset and all its subsets freely available. You can just download it from a couple of mirrors and there you go. And also, while well, there's a metal dataset, which is my own curated 7,000 samples dataset, which is as of now not open source. Those are the data sets that I'm working with. And let me just scroll down and show you a little bit more. Rendering the samples so that you get an idea what those samples look like. So I just take JSFX here and I render a sample. So you can see here, this is a Corel from the JSFX data set. And if I just, wait a second, if I just play it, maybe you will hear it.
very nice music, very harmonic, again, for four singing voices. Let me just render another sample. So you see the patterns, always four voices. This is a different one. And this is always the same for instruments. Good data set to get started. Let's take a look at Kunst der Fuge. So again, classical music, bigger data set. Let's render a sample. So here you can see, well, it's from Liszt, this kind of um, meta information that I always keep track. And we only have an acoustic grand piano. So let's listen to that one. Okay, let's render another one. Maybe we find something that, well, here's an electric piano in it by Victoria. So you see in comparison to Johann Sebastian Bach, now we have like instruments that are not voices. And here Debussy, piano work again. So it has a different understanding of what harmony is. Let's find another one. There you go. Rossini, another piano work. And I just click once more because I would love to see some orchestral work here. Maybe I don't find it. Hapsichord, no. Grand piano, no. Acoustic grand piano, no. Music box, synth bus, no. Another piano, electric piano. So it has a lot of piano works in it. Another piano. Let's try it two more times. This one and that one. Well, now a choir and a church organ. Let's run this one. So, well. I failed to find orchestral music, but I know it's in there. So this Kunst der Fuge. Let's go to Lack Clean. So something else. Pop music, maybe. Looks different. We have a lot of drums here. There's electric piano and acoustic guitar nylon. Something on the beach. Let's render another one. Different set, harmonica, acoustic bass, string ensemble. So you see big difference is that now you have drums and different kind of instruments. Here overdriven guitar, so this might be rock music or even metal, let's see. Let's have listen at another one. So overdriven guitar, gunshots, mm -hmm. and brass. But well, while we're here, the final one. If you know this song or the other songs, let me know in the comments. I'm very, very curious. A couple of those songs I know, but well, we're talking about almost 200,000 um, songs, so I don't know all of them. I will skip for a moment the luck full because, well, those files take quite too long to load, so it will not give a good uh, music video. But here, the metal data set has ran an example. There you go, overdriven guitar. Let's give it a listen. So here it's a very, you can say like a restricted domain. So it's almost all the time that you have um, a bass, drums and a guitar and maybe something else. Um, it's not as general as pop music, but also, although it's very specific, there are quite a lot of differences in subgenres. So there's another one. OK, 
Okay, let's let's have a listen to another one. See where we are here. Metal. Good. So, in summary, if you would like to get started with music generation, it's always good to have a couple of data sets. Music generation is either symbolic music, sheet music, or with audio files. This video was all about using sheet music in the shape and form of media files. And well, the only thing, quote unquote, that you have to do is that you take those media files and you map them to token sequences that you can feed into a deep neural network for music generation. So thank you very much. And please don't forget to like this video. And if you did not subscribe yet, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you and have a nice day.